Day one, two days of this, density. And this is not gonna be the easiest for some, I know you've done it in science class, correct? Density, mass divided by volume. So you got a little bit of background anyway. Here's the toughest part we're gonna encounter during this one is changing units. Might be in inches, but I'm gonna ask for centimeters at the end. Okay, we're gonna convert a lot of different units here. And if you need me to slow down, if you need me to go over something again, you just ask. All right, or if you're watching this, just pause the video. All right, first of all, how do I know something is given in, I'm given the density, the units, the units. All right, it's always out of mass over the volume. How do I know these are all volumes here? They're all cubic, yes. So that's how I identify, oh, density is given to me. Mass, some type of mass, grams, pounds, kilograms, divided by some type of volume, which I know it's in cubic units, all right? Density, mass divided by volume. That's how we're gonna figure it out. And this is also just a clipping, a clipping of the top of your reference sheet that you probably never used until now, until today and tomorrow. Okay, you've never really asked to convert, you never asked to use the top of that reference sheet. Okay, so here we go. All right, let's dive right into it, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. All right, we got 98 boulders. They roughly cut into a cube. Boom, there's the figure I'm working with right now. It's a cube. Each side, 0.8 meters. The stone has an average density of kilograms per meters cubed. Oh, not bad. There's my density, right? All right. Uh, what's the average weight in what? Ooh, yike, pounds. What's the density in? Kilograms, yeah, so we're gonna have to convert something at the end. Does everyone notice that? Boom, right away. The density density weight is in kilograms, but I need it in pounds. Everyone's good there. All right, so before I can find it in pounds, I gotta find out how much they weigh in kilograms. Formula for density, because that's what's given right here. That's my density. Density equals mass over volume. Hey, which one of those three are we trying to solve for the boulder? Mass, mass, mass. Yep, so M's gonna stay M. What's the density value? 3,000, boom, 3,000 is equal to the mass of a boulder divided by, who? volume. Good thing we're in this unit. What's this the shape of? A cube, volume. A cube is the same as a prism. Prism formula for volume. It's on your reference sheet, look if you need to. Volume of any prism, big B times H. And what do you know about the side lengths and the height? Every dimension about this cube. They're all 0.8 meters, so what should I be multiplying here to find the volume? 0.8 times 0.8, there's the base times the height, 0.8, all the same for a cube. All right, so everyone go ahead, find the volume of a, find the volume of one of these boulders. And it ends up being point five one two, And what is it, meters cubed? Where's that gonna be placed now in my density formula? For volume, yep, point five one two. All right, you guys go ahead, find the mass of one boulder in kilograms, remember, because that's what your density is in, in kilograms. You're cross multiplying, remember, cross multiply. We're not ready to round anything yet either, which I don't think we need to, but. Anybody got the kilogram mass of the boulder? Go ahead, Sean, let's roll. Kilograms. There's one boulder. 1,536 kilograms, but we need it in pounds. Whew. All right, I'm gonna try to make this as easy as possible when we convert. 
first thing I need to find using my reference sheet, what is the conversion from kilograms and pounds? What is that darn conversion? I'm gonna to try to make this as easy as possible on you. What's the conversion from your formula sheet that involves pounds and kilograms? One pound equals how many kilograms? Point four, five, four kilograms. Do we all see that on your reference sheet or in the page before? I'm going to make a proportion out of this now. Now that I have this conversion, I am going to make a proportion out of this. What am I looking to? Yes, Kim. So if underneath that, it says that one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds, does it matter which conversion nope. you do? Nope. As long as the, the numbers I'm about to talk about go, under, go in the right place. OK, it does not. What am I looking to go? What am I looking for, the pounds or the kilograms here? So pounds. pounds. So under pounds, I'm going to put my x. And under kilograms, I'm going to put, how many kilograms do I have? 1,536 kilograms. Again, Cam, going back to your point, just as long as pounds goes with pounds and kilograms go with kilograms, I'm good. All right, cross multiply here. 0.454x equals 1 times 1536. Solve that equation for x. And I'll ask somebody in a second here. How many pounds to the nearest tenth one of these boulders weighs? And you're going to find out they're pretty big boulders because they're pretty darn heavy. Anybody taking this one, how many pounds are in one boulder? 3,383.3 pounds. Whew. And you get into that point, because we still got a little uh, part B here. Getting to that point, everyone good? All right, nice job on that first part. Second part. Dump truck can only carry 28,000 pounds. How many trips is it going to need to make to carry all the boulders there? Now, I want you to be aware of this. It can only carry full boulders. You can't carry one boulder, then cut one in half and say, throw it in there. Okay, it only can carry full boulders. All right, full boulders. So what I want to first find out is, well, how many full boulders can this truck carry at a time? And then I'll figure out how many trips I can have. What's its weight capacity? Okay, I got the 28,000. And we know how much one boulder weighs now in pounds. What should I be doing with the 28,000 and how much a weight one boulder goes? I should divide it by the weight of the boulder, 3,383.3. And I will do that with you right now. This will tell me how many boulders can fit into the truck. And you guys see by the number, I'm going to ask you a certain question coming up next here. So I got my 28,000 divided by 3,383.3. And remember, I can only do full boulders here. There's no way I'm getting 0.2 of a boulder on there. I don't, I'm not cutting it that way. How many full boulders can go? Eight. Eight per trip, right? Eight full boulders can go in there. How many boulders do I have to transport? 98. 98 from the top. We go back to the top. There's 98 total. How are we going to figure out how many we need to transport now? 98 divided by 8. And we'll have to talk about this number as well. There's 98 boulders. I can fit 8 at a time on there. 12.25. You're not making a quarter of a trip. You're never going to get there. 13 trips, right? So not 12 trips because you still won't have enough. You won't carry all the boulders. So 13 
So 12.25, but it's going to be 13 trips. Okay. Anything from you guys? Going? Okay. I'm going to have you do a little bit more work on this next one. It seems a little familiar, hopefully, this next one. We're going to heat the, we're going to cool this room. The room's the entire house here. Two BTUs per cubic, oh, here we go again. Two BTUs for every cubic foot of airspace. Volume, surface area. Cubic foot, volume. Okay, what's the top made up of? Name the top polyhedron. Triangular prism. And what about the bottom one? That's a rectangular prism. By yourself, in your group, you guys got two or three minutes right now to find the volume of each and add them together for me, to find the volume of the total house. Both of them had the same formula. It's a prism, BH. Area of the base times the height of the prism. Area of the base times the height of the prism. Go ahead, talk it through your group. I'll give you about two to three minutes. Okay, so for your volumes, let's do the prism first. What's the area of the base of that rectangular prism? 24 by 18, and what about the height of it? Nine, so hopefully you guys are getting a volume of, what do we get, 1296? Nope, sorry, that's coming up. 3,888. Okay, triangular prism. Take a look. Here's the base, one of these triangles. What's the formula to find the area of that triangle? One half base. What's the length of its base? This one right here. What's the length of that base? 18, 18, 18 times the height of that triangle, six. Now here's where I know we always get confused, the height of the prism. You need to show me what edge connects those two triangular bases. And the edge that connects it, right there, or right there, or right there. Either one you pick, how long is it? 24 feet. Everyone, all right, why I'm picking the 24 there? So what'd you, if you have those numbers, what'd you find as your volume? 1,296. Let's add them together, the total volume. 1,296 plus 3,888. That's a volume of, what did I get here? 5,184 cubic feet. And I know I still have the 1,000 BTUs for every, every window. I'll get there in a second. Two and a half BTUs per cubic feet. Divide or multiply by two and a half. Divide or multiply. For every one cubic foot, two and a half BTUs. So I'm going to multiply. Hey, if, it, if this is an issue, I know some of you are a little, you just don't want to raise your hand and say, why? Maybe I thought I would divide it. Set up a proportion. Watch. Two and a half. BTUs for every one cubic foot. What do we already know? I already know how many cubic feet. 5,184. How many BTUs? Boom. Cross multiply. You'll see, oh, I actually end up multiplying by two and a half. So total BTUs, 5,184 times two and a half. And I still have to add in what though? Why 4,000? Four, th four windows, 1,000 BTUs a piece. So total number of BTUs I'm going to need? 16,960 BTUs to heat or cool this house.
Yeah, so. Because the 4,000 is BTUs, it's not square feet. Okay, right, it's 1,000 BTUs. So I wouldn't add it to this number, no. Okay, because that's 1,000 BTUs and not square feet. I'm adding into it. So that's why I waited to the end when I was calculating the BTUs. Yep, anything else? All right, we got one more here. Okay, can we can this trailer hold 500 bricks? Anybody have laser focus right now and know there's a problem right away? What's the 1920 representing? That's the density, right? But what are the units on the bricks? Centimeters, that's a problem right away. I can't do the density formula right now with kilograms and with centimeters. So what I'm gonna have you guys do is help me out is change all of these to kilograms first. Okay, don't do it at the end. It's never gonna happen. Do it at the beginning. Centimeters to kilograms. I believe that conversion's on there, right? I'm sorry, centimeters to meters. Centimeter, that's actually not on there, right? Centimeters to meters. Anybody know it? I'm gonna give it to you if it's if it's not on the reference sheet, if you need it, I would always give it to you. Centi meaning 100, 100 centimeters equals one meter. Okay, 100 centimeters equals one meter. All right, so let's do the 5.1 first. 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. I know that that's 5.1 centimeters, so I'll pair it with the 100. And these are gonna be small numbers, should be, because you're going from centimeters to meters. How many meters in 5.1 centimeters? And you guys will notice the pattern pretty quickly. What do you have? Point zero five one. And then I'll ask somebody in a second, what about the 10.2 and the 20.3? I don't know if you guys notice the pattern. Maybe you do where you don't have to set up a proportion right away. You're always dividing by 100, right? So you're just moving the decimal two places to the left. So 10.2, 0.102, meters, meters, meters. All right, now that I have that change, ready to go. 1920, what's that? That's the density, right? So density equals mass over volume. So I have 1920. Looking for the mass of a brick, so I can compare that to the 500 I can fit. Can you guys find the volume of a brick? What shape is a brick in? Rectangular prism. Go ahead, find the shape of one of them. And the volume of one of them. Small number, huh? It's fine. 0 0.00105-6006 meters cubed.
Okay, plug that into your density. Let's find the mass of one of these bricks. Weight of one brick, two point, yep, 2.02. .02. I'm not ready to do any rounding yet, keeping the, all these numbers here. And what's this in right now? 2.0 what? What was the density out of? Kilograms, perfect. So there's one brick, about two and change kilograms. Can I fit 500 on the trailer? Can I fit 500 of these bricks on the trailer? Explain your reasoning. What do you want to do with your one brick and 500 of them? Yep, multiply by 500. And we don't have to worry about all the decimals here. We clearly see it's about what, 1,014 kilograms? So this tra trailer, no go, right? Trailer will not hold 500 bricks. Any questions from you guys? Again, all I worry about tonight is you look at the units, make sure the density and all the other units are in the same uh, conversion, all right? All right, uh, close it up. Can you guys get the uh, regents from last week? We're not on this, so I wanna go over a couple from, so that should have been, let's see, August 2016, I believe. I gave you last week, August 2016. Bless you. Number 30. And just keeping you updated, not scaring or threatening, it's just three weeks from today is this test. Okay, three weeks from today. It's one of the last ones I think you guys are taking, so. Correct, yes, it's the one on the second Tuesday, not the first Tuesday. So unless you're taking chemistry, it's going to be uh, the last one you take. Okay, Thursday morning. Yep. Yep, 8 o'clock. And I'm sure I'll have a review session that Saturday before, Monday night. I'm sure I'll stay here too. All right, if it's going to be on Tuesday morning. And also during finals week as well. All right, here we go, number 30. A circle's got a center at 1, negative 2 and a radius of 4. Does the point... 3.4, 1.2, is that on the circle? Show some work to justify your answer. Quick question. In this circle, the radius is four. If I draw in another radius, how long is it? If I draw in a third one, how long is it? It's all four, all the radii are four. I'm asking you that because what do you get when you connect the center to that point on the circle? What's that segment called? The radius. And if that point's on the circle, the length of that segment should be what? Four. How can I check if the length of that segment's four or not? Distance formula, here we go. Not on the reference sheet, so let's remind ourselves again. This distance should be four if that point's on the circle. Let's check. What are my X coordinates? 3.4 and 1. 
and negative 2 minus 1.2. Anytime you square any type of number, it should always be positive. We should never have any negative numbers after squaring. What's that number you're getting underneath the radical? Oh, 16. So the distance is 4, so does it lie on the circle? Yes. And it does say justify, which means your work is fine. If it said explain, why is it yes? All right, ex explain in a sentence or two why your answer is yes. Okay, but since it just says justify, your work should be good enough. Questions there? All right, we can fit one more in, I think. 29. <laughs> MNP is the image of JKL after 120. Yep around point Q, measure of angle L, 47. Measure of angle N, 57. Determine the measure of angle M. Got it. What are we doing to get to triangle MNP? What are we doing to triangle JKL? To go from here to here, what uh, transformation? Rotation. What doesn't change in a rotation? Side length or, in this case, angle measure. So angle M should be congruent to what? Angle J, yep. Is there any way I can find angle J? Well, let's take a look. What is angle N congruent to? Angle K, yep. Angle K, angle N is 57, so that means K is 57. And J and M are congruent, so we can find angle J, which is equal to angle M. 180 minus 57 minus 47 ends up at 76 degrees. But it also says explain how we arrived at our answer here. Well, what can you tell me? Well, well, how'd you know there are Corresponding angles were congruent. Rotations do not change. In this case, what? They don't change. Angle measure. So corresponding angles are congruent, and that would be good enough here. Or you could say it's a rigid motion, impress some people with your vocabulary. Just say rotations are rigid motions which do not change, which preserve distance and angle measure. All right, try those four. They've only got four density problems on there tonight.